Chapter 8, Part 4 of LIFO Reserve, LIFO Liquidation, and Dollar Value LIFO, just some of the things associated with the LIFO inventory system. Now, LIFO Reserve. Many companies use LIFO for tax and external reporting and a different method for internal reporting, usually FIFO. A company must set a reserve to reflect the difference between the internal and external reporting of inventory value. The LIFO reserve or LIFO allowance is reported as a contra account to, the, to adjust the balance of inventory from the internal method to the LIFO method for external reporting. The journal is cost of goods sold, LIFO reserve. So now we're going to look at an example. Company uses LIFO for external, but FIFO for internal, at the beginning of the year, the FIFO reserve had a credit balance of $1.3 million. At the end of the year, the FIFO inventory balance was $2.9, but for external reporting purposes, the balance was $1.5 using LIFO. What should the balance be, and what is the journal? Well, FIFO inventory balance, December 31st. LIFO inventory balance, the difference is $1.4 million. The current reserve has 1.3 million. So we need to increase it by 100,000. So cost of goods sold, we'll get 100,000 and the reserve. And now the reserve will be standing at 1.4. Now, another thing we have is LIFO liquidation. Now, LIFO liquidation is when a company uses LIFO to develop their inventory, they must be careful about depleting their inventory in order to improve their gross profit, i.e. bringing their inventory below its minimum amount. All right, so here is an example. In 2020, beginning inventory had 12,000 units costing $6, and they purchased 8,000 units during the year for $9. They sold 12,000 units at $12. So their cost of goods sold is going to be 8,000 times 9 and 4,000 times 6, which gives them a cost of goods sold of 96,000. What effect does this have on net income? Well, what net income would have been? The difference based on using LIFO and FIFO is that net income increased based on LIFO liquidation, i.e. they took off the old cost and priced the inventory at uh, less than what it cost to replace it. Now, dollar value LIFO. This one's a little more complicated. Another way inventory can be valued using LIFO is using dollar value LIFO. Instead of using a physical count, Cost increases and decreases in the pools of similar items are measured in terms of dollar value LIFO. So let's take a look at an example. Now you can have this problem two ways. One is they give you dollar value, other they give you the index. If they give you dollar value, you have to convert it to the index. So year one is going to be the year in balance divided by the ending year base equals the uh, index. So that gives you one. That's the base year. Then you're going to take the ending year at base divided into the year end value and you're going to get the index for the next year. Then you're going to get the index for the next year and then you're going to get the index for 2013. Now we can work the problem. I'll show you how this works. Now, what we're going to do is for 2020, the first year is always the base year. 2021, what we're saying is we added a layer of 20,000. In 2022, we added a layer of 15,000 at the 1.12 index. And in year three, we went down by 10,000. So now let's take a look at valuing this using our dollar value LIFO. Okay, for 2020, the ending inventory is going to be valued at 400000 because that's the base year. Now, 2021, we're going to have the base 
plus we have a layer at of 20,000 times the index for that year, which is 1.05. So the ending inventory for 2021 is going to be 421. Now for 2022, we have our base of 20,000, plus we have our 20,000 from um, the prior year, and then we added 15,000. So now we take that times those layers times the index for each one of these years, and now the ending inventory at dollar value LIFO is 437,800. Now for our last year, we're going to have 2023 at 1, 20,000 and 1.05, but for 2022, we, in 2023, we went down by 10,000, which means we have to take 10,000 off of the 2020, we will never use the 1.2 index, and now we only have 5,000 left at the 1.12. And that gives us our ending inventory for 2023. Now, here's how it works. If you lose the value, the change for that year, you can never use that index. So in this case, since we went down in 2023, we'll never use that 1.20. Now we'll look at another example. I'll show you how what that all means. So. We lost 10,000, so we have to take it out of the year before, which leaves us only 5,000 at the 1.12. Now, this is what it would look like if you were doing your homework. So you have to remember when you don't use a base like the 1.2, you can't use it. Once the units associated with that are gone, you can't use it. And I'll show you a problem just like that for our next exercise. Okay, example of dollar value LIFO. Now, in this one, we have the indexes, and they are for five years. So I'm going to work through all five years and show you how this works. So first, what we've got to do is take the current year divided by the price index to give you the base year minus the prior year gives you the change. So now for 2021 is the first year. We've got an index of 1.05. We subtract the prior year, which means we increase by 16000 at the base price. Now the next year we take um, the current year minus the prior year. And in this example, we went down by 4000 Now, the next year, we're going to subtract, we went up by 6,000 because we're taking that prior year and subtracting it from the current year. And then in the last year, we went down by 8,000. So now what we can do is we're now going to change the base and we're going to go through and we're going to index the current year of each year of those changes. So now we'll walk through that. Okay, for 2020, we know that 70,000 is the value of the ending inventory. Year two, we added 16,000. So we're going to add 16,000 at 1.05. So we take uh, 70,000 at 1.05. And 16,000 at 1.5, and that gives us our ending inventory for 2021 of 86,800. Now let's do 2022. Now we went down, which means that we are never going to use the 1.16. And we take to take 4,000 out of the change from 2021 at the 1.05. So we're going to take, a, and again, we're never going to use the 1.16. So here we go. Now for 2022, we're going to have still have 70,000 from the base year. We're going to have only 12,000 from 2021. And it, like I say, we're never going to use the 1.16. And that is our inventory at dollar value 
LIFO. Now let's do our next year. Here we go. So we have only 12,000 at the 1.05, none of the 1.16, but we have an increase of 6,000 would be at the 1.2. So our ending inventory is going to be 70,000 at 1, 12,000 at 1.05, and 6,000 at 1.2, which gives our base of 88,000. And it has a dollar value LIFO of 89800 So you can take a look at that. Now we'll do the last year. Our last year, we had a decrease of 8000 which means it is going to wipe out 2023. We had nothing from 2022, and it's going to wipe out 2000 from 2021. Let's see here. So, that's already gone. That's going to be gone. Now we can calculate our ending inventory. We're going to take 70,000 at 1 and 10,000 at 1.05. And we now are 80,000 from our base year is now worth 80,500 in based on for our 2024. Let me change that. Ah! Sorry for that delay. I should have put 2024 at the end because I went through and changed all these years. So, our ending inventory would be 80,000 at dollar value life it would be 80,500. So the thing to remember is once you've used up all the layer for that index, you can never use that index again. Now, what does this look like in your homework? This is what it would look like as a problem. And that ends this part four of the presentations for chapter eight.